Okay. Thanks. For, uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, today we are gonna go talk about the Docker for uh, Drupal uh, developers. Let me start with a short introduction of myself. I am Paolo Mainardi. I work for uh, Spark Fabric. I am the CTO. Spark Fabric is a uh, is a recent new company. Uh, it's born uh, just uh, last year, uh, like a merge between uh, two Italian uh, Drupal companies. And uh, we are hiring. If you are interested to work with us with a very challenging Drupal project. Please come to say hi to our sponsor room and uh, drop your CV there. I am a Drupal developer. I am a Docker enthusiast, of course. You can find there some of my two small pet projects. Dropdoc.io, uh, which is a, a very small tool. Uh, we aim to help you to bootstrap Drupal project base based on, uh, on Docker. And uh, you can find some of my Docker image on my Docker Hub account. I have a twin. You can find me on Twitter as uh, Paolo Mainardi, but I don't share so many contents. You can uh, follow both of us if you want to keep updated on uh, our uh, activities. Ah, okay. Okay, I want to start with some questions. Uh, they, they are very, very simple, don't worry. Welcome, guys. OK, you raise your hand if you ever uh, read the line uh, tutorial. Wow, thanks. If you ever try to, if you are just using for development or in uh, production, if you're in charge of uh, infrastructure. Wow, thanks. So a brief outline of the, the presentation, which is the object of this presentation. We are going to talk about uh, what is Docker, why it is important to know it, what a container is and how to use it with, with profit, uh, how to develop a Drupal application using Docker, of course, PHP applications as well, and uh, some tips and tricks on uh, real-world usage and what we learned so far on uh, using Docker on a daily basis for our uh, projects. So why Docker? This is a question that I've been asked so many times by my colleagues, my friends, my families too sometimes. <laughs> because uh, we love as developers to have a consistent development environment. We want to lose the um, wasting time, waste time to uh, rebuild our system from scratch every time we start a new project. I'm very much convinced that uh, um, uh, development is an act of uh, creation and creativity, so we, need, uh, we don't want to waste time to, from our idea to start to code them. Everything which uh, comes uh, around between them is a uh, wasting of time. So Docker can help us to declare in a very streamlined way, which is the dependencies our application uh, needs. Uh, no matter uh, which is the operating system we are running on, or uh, which kind of Linux distribution, so which version of uh, OS 10. So just, as I said, we can concentrate on code instead to set up the environment, because we are developers. Uh, also because uh, Docker supports and promotes open standards. They rely with, uh, on uh, just the existing uh, standard based on uh, the, are in, uh, the Linux uh, kernel, for example. And uh, they are uh, open sourcing not just the code, but also the, some of the process and the definitions which makes Docker a, a very interesting project. And other vendors are joining on uh, the Open Containers Initiative, which is backed by the Linux Foundation International Association. And uh, I advise you to check it out. So what is Docker at the end? Docker uh, is a platform. It's an open source platform to build cheap and run any app anywhere. What does it mean? That we can build our app, our app uh, package our application in a container in a very streamlined way, in an in easy way. We can, uh, the, we, um, using Docker, we can uh, deploy our application with the infrastructure our application needs. Ship and run, that we can move the container from one host to another. And we, have the, we are uh, sure that the, if a Docker, uh, we, we are deploying uh, our container in a Docker, a remote Docker engine, uh, it will work. 
it will uh, works as uh, it works on uh, our machine. Any app, everything that run on Linux and on Windows recently can run in a Docker and uh, Docker uh, host. Anywhere, as I said, local, remote, cloud, VM, Raspberry Pi, any kind of platform capable of running a Docker engine can run our app. Okay, how is the Docker engine made? How can we leverage uh, over on uh, its, its features? How is built? It relies on a standard Linux kernel features only, like cgroups, namespaces, capabilities. This is a very important point because uh, relying on existing features, the Docker developers are not in charge of maintaining very complicated Linux kernel modules. They are just maintained by Linux kernel maintainers. It's a static compiled binary based on Golang, no extra moving parts, so you can just download, grab the binary you can, uh, and, uh, for your platform and uh, you can uh, run it. You don't need it, anything else. And it natively runs on every Linux distro and uh, on Mac and Windows 2 thanks to boot Docker VM which is a very lightweight uh, virtual machine. It acts like, like a hypervisor. Uh, um, like an hypervisor, but Docker is not a traditional virtualization. As you can see on uh, those images, on the left we have a virtual machine stack where we have our infrastructure, which can be our laptop, of course, our host operating system. On top of that, the hypervisor, which can be on Linux, Xen or KVM, for example. And to, to, on top of that, uh, we have our uh, real, uh, our virtual machines, where uh, which are composed by usually by the guest operating system, which can be different from uh, the host. We can run, you know better than me, Windows, uh, Windows, get, uh, Windows operating system on top of a Linux uh, hypervisor. And on top of that, we have uh, the binaries, the libraries, and our application, of course. We can uh, run many of them on our uh, on one host, but uh, you know that uh, virtual machines are very resource angry because they are virtualizing everything of uh, a real machine. So, on the right, you see how the containers virtual sort of virtualization uh, work. You have the infrastructure or your host, your uh, operating system, usually it's Linux, and the Docker engine on top, and you can see we have less layers than the left image because we don't have uh, any more an hypervisor, neither the guest host, because the containers, which are the green, yellow, and red, share the resources of the host operating system and uh, the kernel. So we can run just a Linux application on uh, the Linux Docker engine. You can use, for example, Windows containers on Linux, as you can use uh, Linux binaries on Windows. It's the same concept. What is a container? A container, as this image shows, is uh, just imagine like a box, uh, like an archive with uh, your uh, dependencies, uh, your operating system, and uh, your application inside. There's some metadata to describe how this container should work when I uh, will be instantiated. It's a, uh, just a Linux process. It sits on top of a base Docker image, usually an operating system image, which can be Debian or Ubuntu or CentOS, whatever. It has its, uh, its own network interface, interface, and it has its own process namespace. This means that every container uh, a container can't access other container resource, uh, resources, neither the host operating system resources. Let's see a short demo on, on how the basic command works. <coughs> wow. Okay. We are in a, uh, in a fresh uh, pro provisioned host. We are on Ubuntu 14. This is, these are the network interfaces. This is the, these are the process of this uh, host. And on top of that, we are just running a Ubuntu container. We are just asking to give a bash shell. 
This is, these are the network interfaces that you can see are different from the host. Okay. Now we can uh, run a newer Ubuntu version. The dash IT means that we can uh, we want an interactive TTI on our container. And which process must be attached to this TTI? In this case, it's bash. As you can see, we don't have the if config uh, commands on uh, this base image because they are uh, tend to be uh, very small. We can install packages as we can uh, do in a real uh, Ubuntu operating system, and uh, we can uh, run standard commands like this one. For example, we can install applications and services like Nginx. It's totally okay to do that. It's a loading packages, sorry, but I can't make it quicker. Okay, finished. <laughs> yeah, it's the same as the LXC. It was based on LXC, but they dropped and they rebuilt a new library, which is called libcontainer. Okay, now we run the Nginx uh, daemon. We can see on our process and we can uh, get the default Nginx page. Okay, we now are running on the host grep nginx. Okay, it's too fast, sorry. But on the host, we don't have any kind of nginx process. Now, just to let you see that we can run another distribution. In this case, we run Fedora. Okay, this is the edge issue of Fedora, it's quite simple. DNF, okay, if config. We don't have if config on uh, Fedora, but we can install it. We use the DNF, it's like the APT, uh, APT for Fedora distributions. As you can see at the end, when you are in a container, you can use it like a normal Linux distro. There is no difference. I don't know what is happening. Okay, it's just installing the packages, quite slow. Okay, now we have the if config command available. That's all. So Docker is an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem of tools, but also services. When we talk about Docker, we talk about the ecosystem of tools, of course. We had the, where we have the Docker engine, which is the tool we saw in, uh, in the demo, uh, which used to, to run and manage to handle containers. And we have the Docker Hub, which is the, like a GitHub for the code, but for uh, Docker containers. Then we have some, uh, some tools, like Docker Compose, which is a tool for orchestrate multi-container application to build uh, uh, complex stack. We have the Docker Machine, which is a tool to automate the Docker hosts provisioning. And in the end, we have a Docker, the Docker Swarm, which is host clustering and container scheduling. To find out more, just check out the products overview on the Docker official page. Well, how we can uh, create a container, our custom container? We can run the Ubuntu, of course, but we want to base 
our application on existing uh, Docker, uh, Docker image, for example. We can use different ways, but I suggest you just to use the Docker file uh, way, which is the um, have all the benefits. You can, uh, for example, uh, version your Docker file on your with your app. A Docker file is just a text document that contains all the comments to assemble a Docker image in a programmatic and streamlined way. Let's see how a Docker file is made. We start by saying um, uh, which is the Linux distri which is the sorry the base Docker image we want to use. In this case, we are saying that we want to base our uh, image uh, with the starting from Ubuntu version 16.04, and then with the, the run instruction, we run real commands on uh, the containers to build the image. So every step of Docker files a sort of a temporary container to build this uh, this image. So we run the apt-get, update, apt-get, install nginx on uh, our uh, Docker file, and uh, we save this. Uh, Hi, I am in your container file on uh, nginx default index HTML path. Then with the command destruction, this is a, a metadata that we are pushing on our Docker image, which is used by Docker when we run the image to execute the the command one one of the command in this case we are saying that i want to when someone instantiate this this image you you have to run the nginx dash g daemon off which is the commands to run nginx then we are saying to docker to expose the tcp80 port because, of course, this is an HTTP server standard port. Uh, the last two statements, it's the docker build t where we specify a vendor and the name of a container. In this case, it's tday15 web. And uh, then, after the build, we can uh, run our container. Just imagine, imagine that this is your uh, new application. Let's see a quick demo. Yeah, this is the Docker file uh, we saw in, uh, in the slide. Now we are running the Docker build command. We are uh, going. We are saying to Docker to build that Docker file. As you can see, it's starting to download the base image. In this case, Ubuntu 14.04. Okay, we are almost done. This is installing Nginx server. Our image has been built. We don't have any container running, but we have our new Docker image on the Docker images repository and we can run it. And what we expect that running this container, we will have a Nginx server running with our application inside, which is just an, hi, I am in your container, but let's imagine that it can be your app. We are going to do a serial on localhost the port the random port the docker choose, has chosen for us and this is our app i don't know why in uh, the demo but now i'm changing something on uh, the docker file to build again the mage because uh, I, I now i have to fix a bug for example 
Oh, I just want to update my application. I update the text file. So we build again the mage. And now it uh, has been very fast because some, uh, one, uh, each layer has been cached by Docker, the Docker daemon. So we run a new, our new container. The older one and the new one are running concurrently. This is the older one, and this is the new one. This is quite useful to make, for example, A-B deployment, where you can run multiple instances of your applications. And then with your load balancer, decide which one is the right one. OK. All right. So what were we learned? We learned that uh, Docker build allows to create Docker image in a streamlined, uh, reproducible way, just with a Docker file in our, inside our application. Each build step gets cached thanks to the overlaid file system. And uh, as you can see, we ran the build uh, on top of the application. Uh, the second time was very fast because, because the cache, thanks to the cached layer. Okay, we, create, uh, we created our uh, we have created our image, our container. We want to ship our container on production server. Or we want just to share the, the our image with our teammates, for example. Then, as you can see here, uh, maybe you recognize this uh, this pattern that uh, we use every day when we want to share our code with uh, someone else. We use uh, we use Git, of course, and uh, we Git pull. We download the code with Git push. We push the code somewhere in our uh, Git uh, GitHub account, for example. And uh, with uh, with Docker, we have the same concept. We have the the commands Docker pull and Docker push, which are uh, which aim to to do the same things. At the end, we pull the image from uh, the registry, and uh, with Docker push, we push our image to our registry. The Docker Hub in this uh, specific case, a Docker Hub it's uh, like a, like a GitHub for uh, Docker uh, Docker images, and uh, you can explore the official repositories which are uh, baked by the, the vendors like Redis, Ubuntu, MongoDB. Uh, they are official because they have to follow a streamlined process uh, to respect the best practice or uh, security, etc. I suggest you, my advice is just uh, to, when you create a new image, uh, is to, to base your image on one of them when they are available. Let's see how the uh, Docker app works. Ah, oh, sorry. Ah. Sorry, I missed to download this demo. Push. Okay. With Docker login, we login to the Docker Hub. We have to. We should to create an account there. Okay. Login succeeded. Now we want to push our last image, day and GDX demo, to our uh, Docker Hub account. We just push the image on the our account. Okay. It, it ends here. Now let's see how we can use it in another host. Okay, now we are uh, we are uh, running a SSH command to connect to another remote host, which is a totally different uh, host, 
where, uh, where we build uh, the image, and uh, there we can uh, download the image that has been pushed before, as we are doing for the official image like uh, Ubuntu. We download the image with our app inside. We don't care anything else. We just download the image. We know that running that image, we will have our application up and running without installing anything other on the host. We are running. What we expect is the high Miami New York container. Okay, Seoul on the random port. Hi, Drupal Day 2015, I am in your container. It's quite clear, I hope. Okay, any app, anywhere. This is, this is the slogan of Docker, but what does, uh, what does it mean? That if, the, if it works on Linux, it works on Docker. It's not just for command line apps. You can uh, Dockerize everything, everything which runs on Linux, like uh, Chrome or Firefox or VPN. You can, uh, if you're interested in that, you can uh, follow the Jesse Frazel uh, GitHub uh, account, Docker Files projects, where you can find a lot of crazy things like Chrome, Firefox, VPN, or Tor, or uh, whatever. And every Linux host that run a Linux 3.8 plus, it's a host capable to run the Docker engine. Without, without installing anything else. But now, uh, this is, uh, let's see how we build today a Drupal or PHP application. We start, of course, using an operating system, which can be a Mac, a Linux, or a, a Windows. For example, on uh, at Sparfabric, our developers are uh, using uh, every one of, of those. And uh, on top of that, you have to install PHP, of course, MariaDB or MySQL, uh, DB Server, or Nginx or Apache, you can choose what it fits better for you. Then on top of that, you start to install Do uh, Drupal. Then you need maybe Java for uh, running uh, Elasticsearch or uh, Solar. For example, and you can choose here. I can uh, I can use okay the Oracle JVM, or I want to stick with the Open One, Open JDK, because I love open source. It's up to you. And then maybe you need Node because uh, you have a, a sort of uh, a socket uh, I/O. You, you need uh, interactivity on your page, or you have a chat or uh, whatever. Then uh, if you you uh, when your proje project grows. Uh, you need a cache system like uh, Memcache or uh, Redis. And then maybe you need Ruby because uh, you are using uh, SAS or less for compiling your team. And this is quite a mess. This is what happens every time. Because, uh, for example, you start a new project uh, which requires to run PHP 7, and you upgrade on your host PHP. And your last project works, but the older one are uh, totally broken because they are not updated to works with the PHP 5. So we have Docker Compose to the rescue, of course. Docker is a solution also for this. What is Docker Compose? Docker Compose is a quite simple tool. It's just a wrapper around uh, standard Docker commands where uh, you where you have on uh, your uh, you, you on your project you have a Docker Compose file which describes your stack, all your containers, all your services, and then you can uh, run your stack with just a command with the Docker Compose app. 
For example, now we are working with a very big uh, enterprise project which requires a lot of external dependencies. And we used to maintain uh, like uh, 30 pages of, uh, on our wiki just to stop the environment. Sometimes it required uh, days just to make a new developer join the project and start to code. It, it was a totally, totally a mess, a wasting of time and uh, money. Now, now we can uh, make join the uh, new developers on our project just by running a command with a few lines in, uh, in the wiki, just how to install uh, the Docker, the Docker engine. This is uh, how a Docker file, I don't know if you can uh, read it. But uh, this is a, a typical uh, Docker Compose file. We, we start uh, the, declaring a version. In this case, we are declaring version 2 because they updated the Docker Compose uh, standard, uh, standard some releases ago. I, my suggestion is just stick with, the, with this version because the older one will be discarded in next releases. And then we declare services. In this case, we are declaring a front-end container, which is based on a Drupal 7.43. Uh, we are declaring a, a volumes. We are saying to Docker, OK, mount my site all modules in my local file system inside the containers and map the ports 80 to the port 80 of the container. Then we, we declare that we want a MariaDB service which is uh, based on MariaDB image, of course. We declared the ports, the environment, to configure the containers uh, at runtime. When uh, this container will start, will start, we read these two environment variables to create a Drupal database with a root password, because we love security. Then uh, we have memcache service, which is running on standard ports, and then we are running a source service. Okay, this is uh, quite a usual stack you can run on uh, your Drupal projects. Let's see how it works. Okay, this is our uh, um, root of our Drupal project. This is the Docker file, the same we saw in the slide. With a, it's not totally the same, but okay. Docker Compose app. Now uh, the the Docker engine is reading this file, is downloading all the images we declared there. Just imagine that this is your new laptop with just the operating system, the Docker engine installed. You don't need to install anything else. After that command, you can start to code with all dependencies, memcache, solar, PHP, MariaDB, everything needed for that kind, that specific application. You just need a good ADSL connection the first time. Okay, we have the service, all the services up and running. Docker Compose PS to see which process are running. We can see, sorry, the logs. Then we can run a Drush site install, but we don't. We don't have Drush installed on our uh, system. We are just using the Drush inside the container. We install Drupal, and uh, we can uh, query it and uh, see the output. This is a big win. 
because uh, we don't need uh, anything on our host. We just download the application, and uh, we are uh, we have the the Docker Compose file which describes the stack the infrastructure. We don't care anymore to how to build our system to make this application work. I don't know if a PHP modules is required or which kind of version of PHP I have to install. The path to, to download your app or uh, start from one idea to code, it's very short now. Just imagine, for example, it's not Docker, but you, you want to start to a new project using a new language. You have to, first, first of all, you have, to under, you have to understand how to install this package. On a Mac, you can uh, download the DMG, or you can use Homebrew. You don't know which is the supported version. With Docker, you can switch the version very quickly and start to code. And keep your host environment clean. Okay, now some tips and tricks about uh, our experience using Docker on a daily basis. Uh, as I said, on, uh, on Mac it's not supported uh, on, uh, on, uh, at kernel level, but we, uh, we have to use a sort of small hypervisor which is called the boot Docker VM, which is uh, uh, contained a Docker toolbox package. And uh, we developed a uh, very um, simple um, uh, provisioner based on Ansible and Ombrew to fully automate the installation on uh, OS 10 of uh, Docker toolbox. We switch, we changed the VBox FS with NFS, which is more, very much more performant. With a bunch of init script files for uh, running on, uh, for uh, keep your uh, virtual machine updated and uh, to updated at the end. Then we created uh, a bunch of uh, Docker PHP plus Apache dev uh, base images just intended for uh, developers, crafted for Drupal developers that we use, uh, we, we, do, we use to base our projects and uh, which tools are included with uh, the package. We include Composer, of course, Drush, and Grok, which is a sort of HTTP proxy to make, uh, to create, uh, um, to access from the external to the Docker container uh, web server, to make it possible to access from the external to your uh, container. When you, for example, want to show you to your colleagues, to you want to make some uh, debug on uh, or make uh, some payer programming. Uh, there is a uh, is a bundle the fake SMTP support with the mail log, but you can switch with the mail catcher. And we have uh, we have a Faldi functional uh, cron daemon uh, running, and uh, of course the uh, Blackfire support. I suggest I suggest you to use it on a daily basis, Blackfire, because it's quite important to profile your P PHP and Drupal application. You can check it out on our uh, GitHub account on Docker PHP Base Mage. Uh, if you try it and do, do you want to leave some feedback, okay, two minutes, two minutes. But uh, this is uh, this is the end. Thanks for uh, the attention. If you have some questions, I'm here. Some questions? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You have just to to bind the right parts, and uh, you can do it. It's just a matter of binding the right parts on your host. Please. Yes, the the Docker registry it's uh, is open source, and uh, you can uh, download it and running on your infrastructure. 
but there are also other providers uh, which permits, for example, to, to store images like a Gita, GitLab recently added to their gitlab.com uh, uh, account to upload Docker images as well. But you can run, uh, you can run uh, your own registry. The Docker toolbox. I, I don't understand, sorry. Ah, Docker for Mac, yes. Uh, my, I don't know, because uh, he, uh, he's missing uh, a slide, because uh, they made some uh, big announcement on uh, the Docker con, uh, which is ended uh, two days ago. And uh, the Docker for Mac, it's a sort, uh, sort of uh, evolution of Docker uh, boot Docker VM, which use uh, um, a native uh, native uh, operating system uh, hypervisor for Mac and Windows, but they are uh, they were uh, the, they was in a private beta, but now they are in public one, so you can download it. But uh, the file system performance now it's uh, it's a mess. So uh, I advise you to just uh, try it, uh, give to developers feedbacks, but stick with the boot to Docker VM right now and uh, use our provisioner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they announced also, uh, sorry for the slide, uh, that is missing, that uh, the Docker Swarm, the or, uh, cluster or orchestration tool, is now uh, has been integrated in the Docker engine. So you don't need any more uh, external tool to provision multi-host uh, container, uh, containerized server. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, belongs to Docker. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Opera Container Initiative, uh, they are building uh, just the specification, of course. And uh, they, t they took a lot of uh, from uh, the Docker itself because they, they released as open source the, the uh, internal uh, specs. And uh, other vendors are joining in, like uh, Coros with uh, the Rocket. Uh, Rocket, it's like Docker, but uh, it's made by Coros. And uh, they are uh, very similar, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are compatible at the level of the Docker format, the image format, but not at the command line le level. But uh, they aim to to be compatible at uh, some point. I, I I forgot the first question, <laughs> which is the second one. I sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'll try. I'll try to join. Thanks. I'll try to join. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs>